we're going to talk about percent proportions in word problems. So we're going to start with this problem. The Houston Zoo has 130 different exhibits. Of those 130 exhibits, 30% 30 of the exhibits contain birds. How many exhibits contain birds? Okay, I'm going to start with, I know that no matter what, it's going to be something over 100. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of these percent proportion problems because I know it's going to be something over something equals a percent over 100. So I need to know what am I talking about. So knowing that, it says that there's 130 different exhibits and of those, 30% are birds. So this right here is my percent that are birds. So that means over here on the other side, this should be the part that are birds. So this is 30%. And it said, this should be the birds, so this should be the total um, exhibits. So I know that there's 130 total exhibits, and I want to know how many contain birds. So that's my variable. So that's how I'm going to set that up. I know you're trying to solve it right now. No, don't solve it yet. Let's look at this next one. Okay, this next problem says there are... Um, 39, the Houston Zoo has 39 exhibits that have birds in them. If this is 30% of the total exhibits at the zoo, how many exhibits are at the zoo? So I know that we have 39 exhibits that have birds. So I'm talking about exhibits that have birds out of total exhibits. And then I know I'm talking about the percent of bird exhibits, the percent of the exhibits that are birds. So knowing that, it says there's 39 exhibits, and third, that's 30% of them, and I want to know how many exhibits there are total. So I'll set it up that way. Hint, hint, I bet if you went and solved the first one, you would get 39. Now let's look at this next one. You'll probably never be able to guess what we'll be solving for on this one. So we have the Houston Zoo has 130 different exhibits, 39 of which include birds. What percent of the exhibits at the Houston Zoo include birds? So I'm talking what percent include birds. So this is the percent birds, which means over here should be the part that are birds. Out of the total exhibits, Okay, and I know there's 130 different total exhibits, and 39 of them are birds, and I want to know the percent birds. So I just have the same problem, but in each one I was solving for a different thing. In this first one, I was solving for the part. Okay, in the second one I was solving for the whole, and the third one I was solving for the percent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to practice this and do some more problems. The 7th grade class held an end of the year dance. Of the 187th graders, 54 did not attend. What percent of the 7th grade class did not attend the end of the year dance? So we are looking at the 7th grade class that did not attend the end of the year dance. So we're looking at the percent that did not attend. So we're going to talk about percent that did not attend. So then that means over here on the part side, we're going to have the number of students that did not attend. Okay, and we're talking about the number of students that didn't attend compared to the total students, the total number of students. Okay, and the percent is the 100% of the students, right? So this is really like 100% of the students. So now I need to fill in my missing information. So the seventh grade class held an end of the year dance of the 187th grader. So that's my total, 180. 54 did not attend. What percent is that? So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and solve that problem. I can use the wonderful cross products to help me. I can look for um, all kinds of different ways to do it. 
but I'll go ahead and do cross products this time. So I'm gonna make that 180x is equal to 100 times 54, which would be 5,400. Now I have an equation that I know how to solve because I'm a pro at solving equations, so I'm gonna divide both of them by 180. And that's gonna leave me with x equals, let me just get rid of that, I'm gonna get 30. So that means I'm talking about 30% of the students did not attend the dance. Okay. Danielle spent 65% of her time at the theme park on roller coasters. If she was there for eight hours, how much time did she spend on roller coasters? Okay, so we're talking about the, her time at her theme park and being on roller coasters. So I'm talking about percent of time on roller coasters and the time on roller coasters out of the total time at the amusement park. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with my information so I know that she had 65% of her time was on the roller coasters and she was there for eight hours. So that was her total time. So I'm looking for the amount of time on the roller coasters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up that proportion. Again, cross products always works in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm going to do 65 times eight, which you could do um, on your calculator if you'd like to, and that's gonna be 520 equals 100x. So I divide by 100 on both sides, and I'm left with 5.2. So that means that they, she spent five and two tenths hours on roller coasters. All right, let's look at the next problem. There are 75 students in the school band. 45 students play woodwind instruments. What percent of the students play woodwind? So we're talking about the percent that play woodwinds, the part that play woodwinds, and the total students. So I'm gonna use that to go ahead and fill in this chart, So, or I mean in this, this proportion. So I know that there are 45 students that play woodwind instruments, in 75 total students, and I want to know the percent that play, um, the percent that play woodwinds. One thing I can actually do is to make life simpler, I can actually cross, um, I can simplify the ratio. So 45 and 75, I know because of clocks, I can divide both of those by 15. And I could actually make that three and make that five. And wow, does that make things easier? Because now I know I could just do five times 20 and three times 20. And three times 20 is 60. So X equals 60% of the students play woodwinds. I want you to pause this and I want you to try it by yourself. And when you're done, unpause and let's check to see how you did. But I want you to at least try to set these up by yourself first. Okay, Stephanie made an 88% on her math test. If she got 22 problems correct, how many questions were on the test? Okay, so she got, um, we know that she got an 88%. So that means that this 88% that's the percent that was correct, right? So if she got 22 problems correct, that's the 22, that's the part correct. So I need to know the total. That's what I'm solving for, the total questions. Okay, so notice that this right here is the part correct? This is the percent that's correct. So it's the correct and the correct, and then the total, and then the total percentage. So it's still the part over whole equals part over whole. 
So now I can look for a relationship between the two. I can do cross products. I can do any of those. Um, one thing I notice is 88 divided by four is 22. So I could do 100 divided by four and I'm gonna get 25. So X equals 25 questions on the test. Okay, there is a jar of jelly beans on Mrs. Ambler's desk. 40% of them are red. There are 28 red jelly beans. How many jelly beans are there in all? So I'm talking about red jelly beans and I know there's 40% are red, so 40. So that's the percent that's red. So over here on the top, I'm gonna have 28 because that's the jelly beans that are red. Over the total jelly beans. How many total jelly beans are there? We don't know, so that's what I'm solving for. So now I am going to go from there. One thing I can do just to help myself is simplify 40 hundredths. Couldn't I make that easily just four tenths? Yes, I could simplify it even more, but this is easy enough because then what am I doing to four to get to 28? Times seven. So what should I do to the 10? Times seven. And that's gonna get me X equals 70 jelly beans. Okay, and again, you didn't have to solve it that way. You could have done cross products. You could have done several other ways, but that's just one way to do it as far as um, solving it once you have the proportion set up. In the school election, Jake ran against Tyler for secretary. Jake received 75% of the votes. If 240 students voted, how many votes did Jake receive? So we're talking about Jake out of the total votes, right? So we're this would be the percent that Jake gets. So that's the percent of the Jake votes. So over here, this would be the number of Jake votes over the total number of votes. Okay, and then over here, a hundred percent, that's the total percentage of votes. Like that's my percentage of the total votes. So I'm going to look to see what I can plug in there and I see that um, Jake received 75% of the votes, so that's going to go there, and it said 240 students voted, so that's 240 total, and we want to know how many Jake got, so I'm going to go from there. Now again, I can do cross products, I can do um, look for a relationship between one and the other. I'm going to simplify this because it just makes it way easier because I know 7500 is three-fourths from the top of my head. And then I can say, hey, four times six is 24, so four times 60 is 240. So I'm gonna do three times 60, and I'm gonna get 180. So that means X equals 180. So Jake got 180 votes. I hope this helps, and I hope you understand. Bye.